To configure the material ledger in SAP S4HANA, we will first create a so-called valuation area. Therefore, we navigate to transaction code OX10. Because in the SAP system, from the perspective of controlling and finance, a valuation area is nothing else than a plant. So we click on new entries. By the way, if you want to find out more about the plant creation, I will leave you another video of mine in the description of this one. Let's just say Z123, test plant, then enter. Then for now we hit on save. We are prompted to this window over here. Let's insert just some dummy data as well. The country, let's say Italy. And then we hit on enter. Okay, so far so good. For now we created a plant, also called valuation area. Now we navigate to the customizing via slash n s p r o. Click on sub reference IMG. And then under controlling, general controlling, multiple valuation approaches, transfer prices, basic settings, check material ledger settings, you will find the customizing for the material ledger. So first of all, you can see here, assign currency types and define material ledger types. We select this one. Here we will now insert a new material ledger type. So we click on new entries. Let's just say 9999, description, test, material ledger, and that's basically it. So the material ledger type is a combination of multiple currencies or valuations that are kept in the material ledger for a particular valuation area, so for a particular plant. Here we'll now say save. Let's just change this to Z999, like that, and save. Now we select our entry and then we click on define individual characteristics. And over here you can see the company code currency was already assigned. We can say new entries and then also insert the group currency, like that. So this is important because the currency type is required to be able to transfer amounts between different components of our SAP S4HANA system. So far so good. Let's go back and back again. Once more and once more. We can go to the next customizing step called assign material ledger types to valuation area. So before we can now actually assign our created material ledger type to our valuation area and company code, we must assign our valuation area to the company code first. So this is done via transaction code slash O, OX18. Over here we click on new entries, then we select our company code and the plant we just created before, and then save. Now let's go back to our material ledger customizing. Over here we click now on new entries, then we select our valuation area, and then we select our material ledger type that we just created, and then click on enter. You can now see the status is already green. Click on save. Now let's go back and back again, now you can see the last step, activate valuation areas for material ledger. Let's select this one. Now we can actually click on check material ledger settings for our plant. And here you get an overview of all the customizing that was done by now, just to verify that everything fits as expected. Let's go back and back again, then click on activate material ledger. And here you can now see our valuation area and company code assigned to the material ledger type. You can see the status is already green. And now we can set here the material ledger to active by ticking this check mark. And we can set over here the price determination. Let's actually inspect the search help over here. You can see we have multiple options in a transaction based material price determination. So this would be the option if we set it to over here with price control V. So we are talking not about a standard price, but about a moving average price. And by the way, I have another video explaining you the difference about the two. I will leave it in the description of this one. The material is valued at the moving average price. And with price control S, the material is valued at the standard price. So this would be if we set the option two. If we set a three over here, then the valuation price, so the standard price, would remain unchanged and the periodic unit price is calculated for the material valuation of the closed period. So this means that the indicator 3 is only possible for materials with a price control set to S, so set to the standard price. So actually this is only a proposal, so meaning that this year is particularly important. When we actuate the material ledger for our valuation area, also called plant, we can specify what type of material price determination will be proposed when we create a new material master in that valuation area. We will set it to 2. Then you can see a one more column. Price determination is binding in valuation area. So this would mean that if we hit this indicator like that, then we can prevent that the price determination for the materials in our valuation area 
are to be changed upon creation of the material or at a later time. So this means that this indicator over here, the 2, if we deselect this one over here, this means that 2 is defaulted in our material master when creating the material master in the valuation area. However, we could change it to 3. But if we select this check mark over here, then the price indicator 2 cannot be changed. This is the difference. Okay, for now, we are fine, we can save. You can see after activating material ledger, live data must be converted. This is fine for now, we can continue and save. Last but not least, let's see this in action. We will take a look into the material master via transaction code slash n mm01. Let's say this is our new material number, then we have the industry sector, <clears throat> and then we have a material type, let's just say trading goods, and then we hit on enter. Now we select the views, let's just say basic data, and then we go for accounting one, click on org levels, insert your plant. Now we take the one we created in the beginning of the video, this one over here, and click on continue. Now we just fill some dummy data, and then we go to our accounting one tab by just clicking on enter. And here you can now see that the price determination and material ledger active is grayed out and there is nothing inside here. This is because for our new valuation area, we need to activate the quantity and value update. So we navigate to transaction code slash O, OMS2. Over here, we select our material type, which was HAWA, then click on quantity value update, scroll down until you see your valuation area and now select quantity update and value update, like that. So the quantity update specifies that the material is managed on a quantity basis in the material master record for this valuation area, and the value update specifies that the material is managed on a value basis for the material master record in our particular valuation area. And those values are also updated in the respective general ledger accounts at the same time when we post documents in our materials management. Let's save. Okay, let's go back. Now it's still grayed out, but let's now create a new material via slash n mm01, insert a material, hit enter, basic data one, and accounting one, our plant z123. And now you get the error message here, material ledger must be set productive for valuation area z123. Now let's inspect the search help. You can see here, it is required to activate Material Ledger via OMX2, OMX3, and OMX1. Let's actually inspect all of these. Afterwards, it needs to be set productive via CKM start. So let's inspect all four of these. If we forgot something, close, close again, slash O, OMX2. This is what we have already done. Here's our Z999. And also here are the currency types stored. This is fine. Let's go to slash N. OMX3. Here we can see valuation area and company code, and we assigned our material ledger type. The status is green, so this is also fine. Slash n OMX1. This is our third activity. This is also fine, as you can see, status is green. And now we go to slash n CKM start for our plant Z123. Let's execute and test run. Start immediately, then click on confirm. Confirm again. You can see the job is ready. Let's inspect the job via slash O SM37, execute. You can see the job is finished. Let's inspect the job block. You can see the plant can be set to productive for the material ledger. So this is fine. Let's go back. Let's now go to deselect the test run and execute. Start immediately, confirm and confirm. The job is now ready. Let's inspect this job again, slash O SM37, execute. And we can see it's finished over here. This is the new job. Select this one, job lock. And we can see no error message, all finished. So let's close this one, close this one as well. And now we can click on continue. We select basic data and accounting one in our material master, our plant, and then continue. Now you can see we are inside the material. Let's insert a description and the base unit of measure. Hit on enter. And now you can see over here, the material ledger is active and the price determination was set to 2 and we can't change it. This is what I told you before because we set the indicator that we do not allow this to be changed. Now you could insert over here your valuation class to derive the general ledger account in the financial accounting and over here you could set the standard price and also the price control either standard or moving average price if needed. Okay, this marks the end of the video. I hope you liked it. If so, then please subscribe to the channel and activate the bell. See you next time.